together about 12 minutes ago. <laughs> it's gonna be great, no worries. Okay, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining the Digital Daycare. I am Crazy Aunt Lindsay, and this is a very special live stream event broadcast brought to you by not one, but two amazing Portland local female founded businesses, Living Room Realty for providing the fab lab a gorgeous home to come to you live. And of course, we cannot forget Rain the Growth Agency, Rain TGA, for being our awesome media partner. This whole thing is brought to you in fantastic collaboration with my girl, Misha, out at the Bajika Lab in Boston at MIT. Shout out to you. Can't wait for your show to start next Monday. You'll be seeing me on Zoom with Pajika Lab at least once next week, so stay tuned for details there. Uh, I am so excited to see you. Today's project is very, very special and only requires two, maybe three, maybe five ingredients. Just kidding. <laughs> All you need for this week's pro for today's project is cornstarch and water. If you have cornstarch and dish soap, you'll be able to take this project to the next level with me. So grab those things after you quickly do what? A wash your hands. I'm gonna go over to the Fab Lab sink, wash my hands really fast while we hang out with Logan and or the hand washing song from the Fab Lab while we do our hand washing together. And I'll meet you right back here for part two or part one of today's project. The way to wash your hands. non-Newtonian substance. If you remember from last week's vocabulary, we talked about viscosity. Viscosity is what we use to describe the thickness of a liquid. Now, as you know, a solid, a solid substance has a definite shape, size, and even weight. Liquid has an indefinite shape, but it's a substance that you can see and manipulate. Gas is just cute little molecules floating in the air. You can't grab it, it has no definite shape, but you can still turn it into one of the other two things. Now what I have here in my bowl is one of my favorite examples of non-Newtonian liquid. 
If you see, it's moving around just as if it were a glass of water or oil. But as soon as I try to grab it, it hardens up. Now, heat or temperature change is normally what we're used to know, used to hearing changing the states of matter of something. But there are sub sub some substances whose states of matter change according to pressure. Temperature can sta change states of matter and pressure can too. Now pressure is the amount of stress that you're pressing on a substance. This here in this bowl is a non-Newtonian fluid called oobleck or a suspension. As you can see, if I gently put my hand in, it goes in as if it were a liquid. But as soon as I try to lift my hand out, it hardens and keeps my hand inside. If anyone has ever been to a golf green or a swamp, then you've heard of Oh my goodness. <laughs> then you may recall the term quicksand. Quicksand is very similar to this. Quicksand is an ultra viscous liquid that comes together with other substances to make it really hard to get out of once you're in it. And it's because pressure, or every time you try to quickly pull your leg or your arm or your hand out of it, it causes all of the molecules to tense up. Now you might be wondering what in the world is happening in here and how did you make this non-Newtonian liquid? Very simply, I added a good old kitchen favorite, cornstarch. Now cornstarch is a carbohydrate that's extracted from the endosperm of a corn, of, of a corn seed. On the inside of it, there's a little tiny little portion of it called the endosperm. And that's where the majority of the starch lives. Now, what exactly is starch? Starch is a polymetric carbohydrate. It's odorless, tasteless, fine white powder that helps things like gravy and soups thicken up. That's normally how we use, use cornstarch. But in science, we can use it to make something super fun. Not just this non-Newtonian liquid, which is just cornstarch and water. This, that's all that's required for this. So if you are at home and you have some cornstarch laying around, I want you to pop about half a cup to a cup of cornstarch in, and then slowly add, maybe about a tablespoon at a time, some water. And you'll end up with this super liquidy, non-Newtonian liquid that you can play with like so, as though it were a liquid, but as soon as you squeeze it, it becomes like a solid. Now it's called a non-Newtonian liquid because it doesn't behave the way Sir Isaac Newton described the states of matter. They have other elements that make them behave in the opposite way that we expect them to. So every time I let, I let this sort of drip, I don't apply any pressure, but as soon as I squeeze it, it becomes super hard and then relaxes again. Why, why this is happening is because cornstarch or the carbohydrate that makes up cornstarch is, as I said, a polymetric carbohydrate. It's got a long chain of sugar molecules that are stuck together in a long chain. Now, when we introduce the water molecules, every time pressure is applied to the cornstarch, the water molecules rush in to fill in the gaps of the sugar molecules and become stiff and hard. That's what happens when you apply pressure to it. When you release the pressure, the water molecules or the water balloons escape from the chain and relax again and the whole thing falls apart as if it were a liquid. Does that make sense? Good. I'm gonna quickly rinse my hands after I play a little bit longer with this really cool non-Newtonian liquid. I don't know if you can see this in the overhead, but every time I try to grab it, it's like trying to grab a rock. 
and it pulls up like it's a solid, but as soon as I let it go, it becomes a liquid back into the bowl. This is super fun to play with and fairly easy to clean up when you're done. It's just water and cornstarch. It doesn't stain. It's all natural. But what I would not do is pour this down my kitchen drain. Don't do that <laughs> when you're done. Awesome. I just love playing with science. This is one of my favorite science products to play with. Oh, and I don't know if I mentioned this to you, but the official scientific name for this is oobleck, cornstarch in water. And the word oobleck came from a Dr. Seuss book. So it wasn't even named by a scientist. This is so fun. It's a ball. Ah, it's a ball and now it's a liquid. <gasps> this is so cool. Okay, so this project can be a little bit messy. So I'm gonna quickly put this off to the side and I'm going to teach you how to make another non-Newtonian liquid that's a little bit cleaner and a whole lot of fun. Alrighty. Just come with me over to the Fab Lab sink while I put this off to the side and rinse my hands very gently with warm water. I'm just gonna gently rinse my hands. And I'm not going to pour my cornstarch down the drain. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna rinse the remnants I have on my fingers. Great, okay. Alrighty. See how easy that is to clean up? Look at that, that was just a little paper towel and all the little bits that spilled didn't even leave a trace. This is one of my favorite projects. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to make is some really fabulous Fab Lab Silly Putty. Crazy Aunt Lindsay, how in the world do you make Silly Putty? I'm going to show you right now. All you need for this project is two things. Well, three things if you count the bowl. Cornstarch and a little dish soap or hand soap, which I have here in the form of Castile soap. So all you need is about a cup of cornstarch. That looks like it's about a cup. That's about a cup, okay. My cornstarch to the side. I'm gonna grab a little stirrer because I want to make my Fab Lab Silly Putty a fabulous color. So I'm of course going to add some food coloring. My Oo Black was hot pink, so I'm gonna add a little bit of purple. One, two, three. And I'm just gonna stir it up a little bit. The colors will come in a little bit better once the liquid is added. Ah! <laughs> Cornstarch can get everywhere, so be careful. <laughs> okay, so I added a few drops of my food coloring, which is also forming a suspension, which is what would happen when you added regular old water. So this is about a cup. And to that, I'm going to add about a half a cup of soap. I'm not going to add water this time, I'm going to add soap. And this is Castile soap, but you can use regular old dish soap. Awesome. And now I'm going to mix this up. If you were with us last week when we made Play-Doh, you learned all about Another great sensory project. This is another awesome sensory project for kids of all ages. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit more of my soap to my cornstarch. Awesome. Awesome. I might just add a little bit more of my soap. That should make it about a full half a cup. I might have a little bit more soap if I need it. 
Oh, awesome. This is going to be great. That color is coming in. Are you guys following along? Are you making dough with me? Are you making your silly putty with me? Now, this is just cornstarch and dish soap, or in my case, I'm using Castile soap. Cornstarch is super lightweight, so it gets everywhere very easily. <laughs> it's a great flour alternative. Now, starch is a fully isolated carbohydrate. Now, what makes it different from, say, flour, because sometimes this is known as corn flour, but it's not actually flour, because wheat flour contains a little bit of a protein molecule, whereas this does not. This is only carbohydrate, and that makes it gluten-free. So this is a great alternative when your parents wanna make a, a thick, thicken up their soups or thicken up stews. That's normally how cornstarch is used. Oh, so I added a little bit too much soap, but that's okay because I have more cornstarch. This is an experiment. Everything in the Fab Lab looks is an experiment, and there's nothing that can't be fixed with science. <laughs> with a little science, a little creativity, and a whole lot of fun. Oh, this is coming together very nicely. I'm loving it. This color is gorgeous. I sure wish I had some glitter, because I think that would take this project to the max. What do you think? Oh, look at this beautiful, beautiful dough. This almost looks like Play-Doh, doesn't it? But it's not. It's another sensory project. And this one is Silly Putty. But it does have some properties just like our Play-Doh. I think it's about ready for us to put in our hands. Let's see here. Oh, this is just wonderful. This Look at how great this is. I could add a little bit more Silly Putty. I mean, excuse me, a little bit more cornstarch. So now we're about at a cup and a half of cornstarch. This is an alternative to a classic Play-Doh recipe. Instead, we used cornstarch and hand soap. So this will help keep your hands nice and clean, which is something that we're really focused on right now as a community, keeping our hands and germs to ourselves. Because this is, we're using dish soap or Castile soap, if you get the antibacterial kind, you'll be able to keep your hands bacteria free. And this is just so great. Look at how wonderful this is. It feels so soft. It smells wonderful. And it's a, a, a much different type of sensory project than Play-Doh is. Play-Doh relies on the protein to give it its mushiness, its stickiness, whereas this is relying on its non-Newtonian elements. Awesome, this is just so great. And if I had a newspaper, I could use this to pick up the ink from the newspaper. I could use this a number of different ways. You should make a handful of different colors, however many colors you have, you can fragrance this. If it's not already, already wonderful smelling from the hand soap that you're using. But here you have it, DIY. Silly Putty that we made with cornstarch and good old classic soap. This is so good, I love this. Awesome. Now, as we know, our parents are home right now, working, trying to figure out how to keep everything together. And here in the Fab Lab, as we've been doing all week, is little things that can help our parents a little bit more than normal. So we learned how to make some DIY cleaning supplies this week that, uh, that will help make our chores more exciting. And here we have this lovely recipe for Play-Doh that's fun for you and me to play with, but what if our parents need a little extra help in their day-to-day? -day? It's Friday, so everyone's more relaxed and looking forward to the weekend, but when Monday comes, we gotta figure out how to work and take care of the kids. I have a very special gift just for them. 
we're going to make Fab Lab stress balls using the science that we learned today. All you need for this is a balloon. Inside of the balloon, I've added a little cornstarch already. I did it before, I just before we started, we went live today. All I did was take my teaspoon, my half teaspoon, put it in my cornstarch, and then with very strong fingers, I opened up the neck of the balloon like this, and I just dumped it in. If I had a funnel, I would use a funnel to get the cornstarch in here. Start with the cornstarch first. And the next thing I'm going to do is go over to the Fab Lab sink, and I'm gonna fill my balloon with a little bit of water. I'm going to put my balloon neck on my spout, and then I'm gonna fill it about a tablespoon at a time. And I'm going to do about a tablespoon, and then I'm going to rub the inside of the balloon. One or two tablespoons at a time, and you're just gonna rub the inside of the balloon. You're gonna rub it gently, and try and mix. Ah! <laughs> try and mix the contents of the balloon, your cornstarch and your water, and then you're gonna add a little bit more. Ah! Sometimes it's messy in the Fab Lab, but the best lessons come in messy, don't they? Ah! Awesome. And now, I'm gonna keep rubbing it. I'm gonna keep rubbing my balloon with my cornstarch inside. And then it feels pretty dissolved, so I'm gonna add a little bit more water to my spout. You can use a funnel for this if you don't have a kitchen spout. It's totally fine. exhausted the entire the contents of the insides and the more you squeeze it over time the more it will become non-newtonian inside and start to give a little pressure whenever you try to squeeze it ah oh, this is so cool I'm gonna make another one again this is my cornstarch filled balloon I'm going to put it over my spout like this. I'm going to go kind of high up this time. Hold on tight. <laughs> and I'm going to turn on my water. All right. I think I'm going to try and learn my lesson from last time. And not go too fast. <laughs> all right. Squeeze all the air out. Let me get a little bit more water. Awesome. Okay, this is gonna be good. This is great. Okay, now I'm going to close up my balloon right here. Oh, this one's gonna be a good one. And I'm gonna shake it a little bit and I can feel my non-Newtonian fluid. I can hear it. Ah, oh, this feels so cool. Have you guys made your relaxation squeezers? Oh, this is so cool. These are the best stress balls ever. Super cheap, super fun. Make it as clean as you can in the kitchen and then surprise your parents with one this weekend for their day to day. Awesome. This is so great. Ah, oh, this is super duper good. Alrighty guys, so today we learned a little bit about cornstarch and we used cornstarch and water to make 
to make oobleck, a good old classic. And then we used the same cornstarch, a little bit of soap and a little bit of soap, excuse me, and we made Fab Lab Silly Putty. This is so great. And then we used the same science to create stress balls for our parents. This is so awesome. If you would like to have all the printouts and recipes for this project, make sure your parents are signed up for the nightly newsletter at thefablab.com for the digital daycare. Next up, we have an amazing workout with Coach Cooper and me. I'm super excited for that. I'm gonna clean this up and meet you in the Fab Lab Active Hour up next. All right, three, two. What's up, everybody? It's Crazy Aunt Lindsay, and I'm here with fitness coach Cooper Bruner from cooperbruner.com. He's here to do an awesome active hour here in the Fab Lab. Take it away, Coop. Hey, how's it going, guys? So here's the deal. Before we get started into our warm-up, I want three things from you guys. Number one, a positive attitude. You guys got to get off the couch, put those potato chips away. And number two, I want you to smile throughout the whole workout. Enjoy this workout, it's gonna be great. I'm super pumped to be doing this with Lindsay. It's gonna be fun. With and who? Number three. With, with Lindsay? With who? With crazy Aunt Lindsay. <laughs> My bad. I was like, did I say that wrong? <laughs> and number three, I want you guys to be intense, but at the same time, have fun. This is what we're doing here at Active Hour with Fat Lab. So, for our warm up, we're gonna start it with shaking it out. We'll shake out your upper body. Get your neck loosened up, because we're going to be doing some sit-ups. And we're doing some push-ups, so loosen up the shoulders. A few more seconds here. Loosen it all up. Loosen it up. And now, we're going to start with the legs. Start bringing it down. Loosen up the calves. Loosen up the ankles. Stretch it all out. Move everything around because we're going to have a great workout. Right, Lindsay? Yeah! <laughs> All right, now we're going to do airplanes. You're going to keep your hands straight out right here. And then we're going to start with the right arm, giant circles, just like this. Giant circles for 10 seconds. You're going to loosen up the shoulders with five, four, three, Two, one, we're gonna switch. We're gonna go with the left arm, giant circles. Get it nice, nice and loose. Five, four, three, two, one. Toe touches. We're gonna bring it all the way down. We're gonna stretch it out. Get it nice and loose. Stretch those toes, just like that. Get as low as you can, guys. Try to touch the ground. We're doing it for five more seconds. Four, three, two, one. All right, we're gonna get into a basketball stance, stretch things out a little bit. And we're gonna start with the right leg and stretch out the right quad here. So we're gonna go all the way down here. Stretch that right leg out for 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Switch it to the left leg. Oh, get a nice stretch. Try to touch your toes with both feet or both hands. Five, four, three, two, one. And shake it out. Shake out those legs. All right, now next stretch, we're gonna get the right quad. We're gonna raise this up, stay balanced on our feet. I know it's tricky, just try to stay balanced. Keep your hips forward, like this, keep your hips forward. We're gonna stretch out that quad. How are you looking over there? I feel great. Feel good, nice and loose. <laughs> nice. Concentrate. Yeah, a lot of balance there. All right, five more seconds. Three, two, one, shake it out, shake out that quad. We're gonna switch it, try to stay balanced. You can use your right arm, keep yourself balanced through it. 
Five more seconds. Three, two, one. Now shake it out. Shake it off. About to get started. Strength and conditioning piece. Let's do it, Fab. All right. So we're gonna go three rounds. We're gonna start with inchworms. I'm gonna show Lindsay what we're gonna be doing here and show you guys as well. So we're gonna go all the way down to the ground. Stretch it right here. Then come back up with our feet. We're gonna be doing five reps of those. Then we're doing hip bridges. We're gonna get down on our yoga mat. And we're gonna bring our hips up, our legs up. So it's gonna look like this. One. Hips all the way to the sky. Two. We're doing five of those. And then we're gonna finish with jumping jacks. Okay, I can do that. Can you guys do it? Can you do jumping jacks? Can you do jumping jacks? Just right here. <laughs> five jumping jacks. Awesome. Three rounds. All right? Okay, I'm ready. So we're gonna start in five seconds. And let's get it going. All right? Five, four, three. Starting with inchworms. Two, one, let's go. Get those inchworms. Can we stand back up at the end? Oh. Yes, you have to move your feet up and then go back to your original position. So it looks, yeah, just like that. And then next, next rep, put your feet forward too. My feet forward? Yeah, so bring the feet coming forward. Oh, and like this? Yep. Oh, I That's see. Cool okay. So coming down with your hands, and then moving up. Do five of those. Bingo, nailed it. Awesome. And then now we're gonna do hip bridges. So we're gonna lay down our yoga mat, then bring our hips to the sky. 10 reps. Two, three, four, five, halfway there. Six, seven, Eight, nine, ten. All right, rest for a few seconds. Then we'll jump into jumping jacks. Woo! Five seconds, we'll get started. My back keeps moving. Mine too. <laughs> we gotta stick to the social distancing here. Good job, social distancing. All right, three, two, one, jumping jacks, five of them. One, two, three, four, five. That's the first circuit. Got two more of those, two more rounds. And then I'll be the first circuit right there. I love it, so good. <laughs> Hope you guys are enjoying it right now. I know um, a lot of you have been stuck on the couch and not being able to exercise, so the Fab Lab wanted to come up with a great workout for you guys, so. We're only not even halfway there, so you guys gotta keep pushing it, stay positive, keep working hard. Let's get started. Let's do it. Let's do those inchworms, all right? Cool. Three, two, one. Inchworms. We're doing five. Ah, I'm gonna stretch it out. Whoo! Two more. <laughs> I can do one, I can do one more. <laughs> really stretch it. Oh, that's five. Whew. Shake it out. When you're done with five, shake it out. All right, <laughs> hip, hip bridges. Ten of them. Three, two, one, and go. One, raise those hips. Two, three, all the way up. Four, five, six, seven, 
three, four, five. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing that right. <laughs> I don't know if I'm doing that right. Now. Let me see. It. Okay, hold on. Woo! I took my breath. My head is all like this. Okay. My spots are always terrible. <laughs> yeah, just like that. Just like that. It's tough to get a rhythm. Okay. But once you get down, come up. Boom. Okay. I'll just practice. Like I'll practice at home. <laughs> Here and at home. All right. Okay. Push ups. We're doing five of these. All right, in three, two, count with us. One, let's go. One. <laughs> <laughs> try to try your best, guys. If you can't do it, go on your knees. Ready? One. <laughs> two more. You got this. Let's go, crazy Lindsay. Five. Finish up with the speed skaters. Okay. A little tricky to start, but you're gonna jump. One, six of them. Three, four, five, six. That's great. That's all she wrote. Okay. Two more rounds of these. Okay. If you need water, grab some water. I'm gonna grab some water. Okay. Let's talk it up with Coach Bruner. Thank you for helping us with After Hour. No, I'm loving it with you guys. You fat labbers are crushing it. <laughs> We're about halfway halfway there, guys. So keep pushing, keep smiling, keep working hard. Five seconds, let's do this. Three, squat jump, squat star jump. squat jumps. In two, one, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Feels great. Okay. Push ups. And let's go down. Ah. Two. Ah. Three. Ah. Four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> it! Let's go! And now, speed skates. Let's go! Speedsters. Three, two, one. One. Two. Up. 
for five reps. So we're gonna do five of these, and then we're gonna switch it on the other side, and do five more. Working on the core, guys, right here, all in our abs. And then we're gonna jump in to our- And why are abs important for kids and girls? That is a great question. Your core is the fundamental part of your body that you wanna stay, keep strengthened in all movements, every sport. You think of baseball, soccer, basketball, having a tight core, strong core is the foundation for preventing injuries and getting hurt. And for one thing that I know, like you wanna have a strong core in daily life too, because it's gonna help with your, your back and back pain. Yeah. So, back and back pain. Yeah. Awesome, cool. Now, so fun fact guys, core is important for you. Yep. Core exercises, that is. Awesome. Thanks, Coach Bruner. Coach so, Cooper. we did side planks. We're going to do normal crunches. That just looks like this. We're going to have our feet up. Oh, we're doing crunches. all abs. All Why? abs. <laughs> Grab your parents. They should do this exercise with us. <laughs> Mom, Dad, you better get off the couch and join them. Let's get off that Zoom call, guys. Get over here. Join our fab labs. Fab labs. Fab labs. Fab labs. Fab ab labs. <laughs> That's exactly what we're doing. That's exactly what we're doing. Yeah, so we're gonna do crunches as well, like I was showing. Feet up, doing so ten of these. So it's crunches first. Okay, it's not crunches. And then, no, it's side plank, crunches, okay. and then we're gonna do toe taps. Okay. All toe taps are is put your feet out like normal sit up position, and you're just tapping your heels, going around like this, keeping your core tight. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So we're doing two rounds. And we'll start in about five seconds. Cool, awesome. The first thing is what? Side planks. Side planks, that's right. Okay. Oh no, should we do it like this or should we face forward? Um I might face this way just so we can make sure we're not actually it is better. We'll just this. Like this is great. Yeah. Yeah. Alright. Side planks. Five on each side. In three. Wait, we gotta make sure we're socially distanced. Are we socially distanced? Give me your hands. Okay. Can you touch me? Okay, we're good. We're good. We're good. <laughs> I was like, uh oh. <laughs> Alright, let's do this. We're doing five. Ready, and go. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, I really feel that working my abs. <laughs> We're switching it. Going to the other side. Five of them. Ready, and up. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay. Jumping straight to crunches. How does that oh, feel? Oh, crunches. I felt. I mean, my, my, whatever this is, is, is definitely tingling. Let me know the it's there. The obliques on the sides. <laughs> obliques. Because we're hitting the front of our core and we're hitting the obliques. Okay. <laughs> 10 total reps here, guys. In three, two, one. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. We did it! Woo! <laughs> toe taps to finish up this first circuit. You know the deal. Remind me the toe taps? What, what, what? Oh, that's right. So okay. toe tap right here. Okay. We're going to start in three, two, one. One, two, three, four, and five. And that is circuit number one complete. Yes! Great job, guys. That's the most ab work I've ever I've done in, <laughs> in ages. In my whole adult life. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough, guys. Definitely get some water right now. We're gonna finish up with one more round and then stretch out a little bit and then we're gonna be done. That'll be our active hour. So give yourself a few more seconds get here. Get some water, chillax for a sec, but then That's get to it. Yeah. <laughs> we're, gonna do two, we're gonna do two more or one more? So just two for the abs? And three for everything else? Yeah. Cool. Two rounds. Cool. I can have it. And then wiggle it out and then we're calling it good. Awesome. Good. Okay. Alright, we'll start here in about 10 seconds. Okay. Side plank raises. And five, four, three, two, one. We're doing five. One, two, three, four. Hip hop. Awesome. Woo. Switch it, Ruby. And up. One, two, three, four, and 
two, three, four, and five. Awesome. What's next? I think it's crunches. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, it is. Doing 10 crunches, guys. In three, two, one, up, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Whew. Core is dying. <laughs> My core feels great. <laughs> My core feels like this is what's been missing in its life. <laughs> Much needed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's finish with these toe taps. Oh, we'll wiggle it out. We'll be good to go. Ten of them. Ready? And do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Awesome. Whew. Great job, guys. Woo! Let's clap it up. Now for a quick cool down, guys. We're just going to wiggle it out. Let's wiggle it out. Get everything loose. <laughs> work your neck, work your chest. Get everything. Noodle arms. Let's go. Awesome. Shake and bake. Move it around. Well, let's clap it up for Coach, uh, fitness coach Cooper Bruner. CooperBruner.com. Thank you so much, Coach Bruner. Yeah, check out my website. Check out my Instagram for home videos. We'll at CBruner37. We'll have all that down below, so make sure you check out uh, fitness coach Cooper Bruner. In the meantime, go wash your hands when you're finished wiggling it out, and meet me in the Fab Lab kitchen for the Fab Lab lunchbox. What are we gonna today? Cook today? Count. Welcome back, Fab Labbers. What an awesome workout! Woo! <laughs> that workout was super intense, super awesome. I think my favorite was the Star Jacks. I don't know. So I came back to you. I washed my hands already, and I'm already on to lunch. If you were with us for the first part of the show, then you know that we discussed states of matter, solid, liquid, gas, and we used a very, very simple, easy to find kitchen ingredient, cornstarch, to help discover what states of matter mean, both from a solid, liquid, gas. We even talked about viscosity and non-Newtonian liquids. And today, lunch is going to be one of my favorite demonstrations in the changes of states of matter. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Yes, friends, we are making Fab Lab quesadillas. I am so, so excited about today's lunchbox menu. Okay, so I already have a little something heating up on the stove. We'll go over there in just a second. But to prepare my quesadilla, of course, I need to get my tortilla, tortilla, and I need cheese because quesadilla is queso dia, Queso means cheese in Espanol, which reminds me, stick around for the afternoon session where we have the lovely and fabulous Molto Bueno, Miss Maria with a Spanish class for days for today's community class. Okay, so for our tortilla, all we need, or excuse me, for our quesadilla, all we need is a tortilla and some cheese. We've been rocking with some delicious Havarti cheese. So we're gonna just use a few slices, literally one and a half slices of Havarti cheese. Again, my hands are already washed. Here is my giant quesadilla. And I'm going to cut, not cut, I'm going to fold my quesadilla in half and make a little line. Again, my hands are clean. And we learned from Kelly from Little Sue that the best kitchen tools are our hands. Alrighty, so what I'm gonna do is take my Havarti cheese slice and I'm just going to plate, I'm going to uh, break it in half. I have a little bit less than half of one left over and I'm going to place it in my quesadilla like so. I'm going to close it up and that's pretty literally it. If I want to get extra fancy and extra nutritious, which the Fab Lab is all about fancy and all about nutritious, I'm going to use a few leaves of delicious, mm, I already have a quesadilla over on the stove cooking up, which makes me very excited. It smells amazing. It sounds and looks beautiful. So I'm going to just dress up my quesadilla with a little bit of spinach. So this is a spinach Havarti quesadilla. Close it up, and then I'm gonna take it over to the stove where I already have one quesadilla in preparation mode. Now here's the pan that I use to make it flat. 
And all I'm going to do is flip it. Look at how beautiful, look at how beautiful my quesadilla is. Now, if you are a kid, if you're under the age of 13, you should absolutely be getting parental supervision for this part. Although I was cooking in the kitchen when I was maybe about 10 years old, I started out making eggs and quesadillas, my favorite recipe. And now, I don't know if you can see inside the pan, but you've got a little bit of the cheese oozing out. The cheese was a liquid when it was in milk form or cream form, and then we turned it into uh, congealed fat. We, got, we broke up the, the globules and made it some fat, which is also what cheese is made out of. The fat and the protein, the water is just removed from the milk. And now here it is melting. So it went from being a cheese, or excuse me, being a solid cheese, to a nice melty cheese. And this is just perfect, because it was cooking for a little while, and I just want my other side to get brown. This is gorgeous. I'm gonna grab a second plate very quickly, so I can get my other quesadilla going. Nice and beautiful and melty. Look at this Fab Lab quesadilla. And this Fab Lab quesadilla has a little secret. I'm gonna set this aside. It has Fab Lab secret because what we use is the Fab Lab butter, the herb butter that we made on, I think, Monday or Tuesday. This is our beautiful, delicious uh, rosemary butter. It's our savory butter that we made. And we're gonna use that as the base for our quesadilla in the pan. So I'm just melting a little bit of butter. Oh, it smells so rosemary-ish and beautiful and delicious. It's just gonna quickly melt. So we're gonna go from the solid butter to the heat or temperature state of matter change, melted. And now we're gonna put our cheese and spinach quesadilla on the stove, there we go. And I'm just going to use this other pan right here to press down, add a little pressure. Today's lesson was also a lesson in pressure. Add a little pressure to keep our quesadilla nice and flat. If you, if you are not old enough to do a stove, a stove top recipe, then that's totally fine. If you have a George Foreman grill, if you have a stove top grill, um, if you have a waffle press, this is a perfect recipe for your waffle press, for your George Foreman grill. Um, for your electric stovetop um, um, presses, if you have a panini press. But if you don't have any of those things like I don't hear, a very simple pan, parental supervision, and a second pan on top to add a little pressure is gonna be all that you need for that. Awesome. So while that's cooking, we are going to set our first quesadilla aside that came out perfectly brown, if I say so myself. I'm so, so proud of this beautiful quesadilla. This is our Havarti cheese and spinach quesadilla. So of course what we need for our quesadilla is maybe a little guacamole. So I'm gonna grab a little bowl and some avocado, which is just so super ripe. And all you need for this is to open up your avocado, scoop out the contents. Nice. And now you can add anything you like. I'm gonna start with a little bit of salt and pepper. Boop. Boop, a little salt, a little pepper. Garlic goes pretty good in it. I'm just gonna hit it with a little dash of garlic. Oops, just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit. If you don't like garlic, you don't have to add any garlic. I just want a little bit. Nice. And because I have some, and nothing Latin flavored is good without a little bit of salsa, I'm gonna hit it with a little pico de gallo or salsa, just a little tiny bit. I'm gonna check on my quesadilla. Ah, beautiful. So beautiful, I'm so proud of this. And because that's just about done and I just want it to get brown, I'm gonna turn my stove off. I'm gonna 
going to turn my stove off while that finishes up. And get brown because it's already nice and melty on the inside. Perfect. I'm going to get back to my guacamole. And what I'm going to do here is just mix it up just a little bit. Now I do have a little bit of lemon. So you can use a little bit of lemon or lime in this. I'm going to pop over to the Fab Lab fridge. I'm going to find my Fab Lab wine. Here's my Fab Lab wine. I'm just going to roll this to get the juices out of the cells inside of it. I'm going to use the same knife and good kitchen skills that I used to prepare my avocado. And I'm just going to squeeze a little lime juice into my Fab Lab kitchen guac. Just a little, not too much. Perfecto. And then I'm going to mash it up just a bit. This, friends, is the simplest recipe for guacamole. Super inexpensive, very fast. If guac isn't your deal, no biggie. You can just use the salsa. Look at how cute, delicioso. All right, so I'm gonna get my plates ready. Here's my salsa. All right, prepared. I'm gonna drain a little bit of the water off. The longer pico de gallo sits, the more the water comes out because certain fruits and vegetables have tons of water in them. And just to make it look pretty, I'm going to plate my guacamole with my salsa. Beautiful. And then I'm going to grab my other quesadilla from the stove top that I've already turned off. Oh my gosh, this looks so beautiful. Ah, look at how beautiful that is. Ah. Look at how gorgeous this is. It's nice and brown. And the next thing I'm going to do is just cut it in thirds. Let's see here. Ah, uh, the crunch on this is absolutely fabulous. The crunch on this, this is super hot, so be careful. If you have a pizza cutter, you can totally use a pizza cutter. I don't have a pizza cutter. <laughs> Handy. Ah, look at that ooey gooey Havarti cheese. You can use any cheese you like. If you've got some mozzarella on hand, if you've got goat cheese, if you've got plain old American cheese, we had some Havarti on hand. And Havarti is one of my favorites. And now I'm just going to arrange it with my clean hands. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at these crispy, crunchy pieces of molten cheese. Again, this is my favorite States of Matter, the most delicious States of Matter project ever, where we take solid cheese and we use heat to change its state of matter. Here's some melted cheese that's gone back to being hard again. Mm. Do you hear that delicious crunch? I'm so excited about today's Fab Lab lunchbox menu. We made some stovetop quesadillas, plus a little super quick guacamole, and of course, regular old store-bought salsa. I can't wait to eat my lunch. We're gonna take a break and be right back at 1.30, as always, for the afternoon session, we're going to have Spanish class with Miss Maria. I can't wait to see you then, so come back, and I'll see you soon. Have a great afternoon. <laughs> Welcome back to the afternoon sessiones of the Fab Love Digital Daycare. I'm so excited for today's community class. We have Miss Maria, who's going to come back and do part two of our awesome Espanol lesson. Then she's going to stick around for some coloring and fun. And then of course, we're going to wrap up the day with a little story time. I'm so super excited. The first thing we're going to do is welcome Miss Maria onto the show. Get over here, Miss Maria. Woo! Hey everyone. Hi. So what are the two things
things that we're going to remember. Social distance. Distancia social. Distancia social. And, and first of all, wash my hands. Lavos la manos. You need a quick second. <laughs> Did I say that right? Lavar las manos. Lava los manos. We're going to wash manos. our hands. Awesome. So while she's over there doing that, I'm going to ask you to just quickly get yourself together, get all your wiggles out. If you just came back from lunch, like we did, I have a lot of energy and I'm super excited because I'm gonna take all that energy and I'm going to infuse it into my perfect pronunciation of my oh, newly yes. acquired Espanol words. Yeah. All right, Miss Maria, thanks so much for joining us. Of course, thank you for Baker. having me. Take it away. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Welcome back. Uh, I know last week, yeah, it was definitely just last week. It was last week? I'm still holding up, y'all, being at home, staying with Estancia Social, still remembering. But we learned a couple of amazing words, uh, everything from, you know, how are you, to hola, como están? And your response to that would probably be... Bueno. Bien. Bien. Bueno works too, right? But it's muy bien. Muy bien. Yes. There you go. Very so good. So today, uh, in learning colors, uh, we're going to try, try to integrate them as, or we're learning some new words. However, we're going to learn a little bit in terms of how to introduce our family. So a little bit of members of our family, right? Familia. Familia. Ooh. Exacto. <laughs> and most of all, most of all, because probably you all are staying with your family at home, right? <laughs> if I you're hope lucky. so. If you're lucky. You're right. If you're lucky. So whether you have a mom, a dad, a sister, a sibling, just hanging in there, you're going to learn how to introduce them in Spanish. Are you all ready? Are you ready? I'm for sure ready. Perfect. So we're going to take it a little bit slow this time, uh, only because when we think about the members of family, one of one most important thing, first of all, is that members of family is super key because they have a lot of accents. Accents. Acentos. And those are the, like the tiny little words, on like the tiny little lines on top of certain words in Spanish. Ooh, like the enya above the N. Enye. 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 Yes. Okay. <laughs> and like the uh, A also has an accent, but more because of the pronunciation is very key to identifying both feminine and masculine. Oh. Because we're all going to be gender neutral here, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, last gender week. neutral, gender oh, neutral. We learned that in ASL, okay. our American okay. uh, Sign Language class. That's awesome. <laughs> but we also learned last week the word nibblings. nibblings. I introduced the word nibblings. Which is my favorite new word. Shout out to all my internet nibblings out there. Exactly. <laughs> so we're going to learn a little bit in terms of how to say nibblings and what does that mean. But let's get started and actually start with mom. Ooh, mom. Yeah. What do you think mom sounds like? It's pretty simple. For some folks. I'm, I'm going to just reach into my brain and I'm going to say it's madre, mama. 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 What is ma what's madre? Madre is also mom. But like mother. But very, yeah, but mother. Okay. Right. Okay. It is very much like official title, mm -hmm. you know. Um, I call but, my mom madre sometimes. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> my mom gets a little bit upset when I call her madre. Yes. Yeah. So, we totally, we know, totally did it. We started just, calling her that when we were in our, tweet, in okay. our teens. Okay. <laughs> I don't call her mother anymore because otherwise she gets upset. So it's mom. Whatever you call your mom out uh, uh, is whether mom, ma, right? Mom is la mama. La mama. La mama. La mama. Say it with me, everyone. La mama. La mama. Notice how I also added the L A la before mama, only to emphasize that that's the person that is a feminine sort of. Uh, title to okay. it, right? So la is mm -hmm. typically for feminine objects, people, when identifying that femininity of it. It's weird, Spanish sometimes can be weird, y'all. I'm mm -hmm. just gonna name it out there if we're working with gender neutrality and <laughs> we're going to sort of figure out what to do with it, right? However, is then the difference between that and papa, which is dad. Mm -hmm. Papa. El papá is el papá dad. El papá, which is technically is a the dad, right? But it's el papá. And when you want to say it to your dad, it's like papá <laughs> or dad, come over here, have fun with us. That's how it typically goes. Cool. Ready? Cool. So far, so good. So far, so good. Should Great. We, should we recap really fast? Let's do it. Okay. So, mom. La mama. La mama. 
Dad. El Papa. And what is the la in L? La is feminine verb and L, E L, <laughs> perfect, is masculine verb. Exactly. La, L. Perfect. Now, what about daughter? Ooh. Right? We have daughter and son, uh, but daughter is la hija. La hija. Yes. I love it. La hija. Yeah. Remember how last time we also said that the H in Spanish is silent? <laughs> the hija is H-I-J-A, but you do not uh, pronounce the H. So it's hija. Hija. Yeah. La Perfect. hija. Daughter. And ha 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 ha. Just a good way to remember it. Hija. Got it. Perfect. Hija. Son is el hijo. El hijo. Yes. Wow, you're catching up pretty fast. <laughs> I can see the pronunciation. I have a really That's good awesome. teacher. <laughs> Do you have siblings? Uh, yes, I have many siblings. <laughs> Brothers, sisters. Yep. How many? Uh, nueve. Nueve. Mm -hmm. Whoa, including mm -hmm. yourself? Uh, diez. So diez, including. Me. Yeah, diez, including all of us. Got mm -hmm. it. So we learned, so diez hijos. Diez hijos. And to put it gender neutral is hijes. Hijes. Yes. Hijes. Exactly. So now, brother mm -hmm. means el hermano. El hermano. Yes. So if you want to talk to your brother, you say, hermano, what's up? How are you? <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Hermana. Hermana. Sister. Hermana. So la hermana. La hermana. Is the sister. Is the sister. Cool. Correct. You got those? Yeah, I think so. So, brother. Brother is el hermano. Perfect. Sister. Is la hermana. Amazing. <laughs> now, my grandma the other day was actually talking to me on the phone because we were sort of remembering my grandfather, uh, who unfortunately is no longer with us. However, rest in peace and power. Uh, he, she was telling me a little bit in terms of just multiple stories. And I typically call my abuela, uh, bue. Just, I remove everything because it's just of like uh, feeling just that tenderness. But grandma is la abuela. La abuela. Yes. Can you say that with me? La mm -hmm. abuela. Perfect. And grandpa, you know, you already know what's already before abuelo. What's before abuelo? El. El. El abuelo. El abuelo. Perfect. Nice. You definitely, how's everyone doing out there? Because Crazy Aunt Lindsay over here is rocking it. <laughs> uh, so tap into it if you're sort of following through. We're going to yep. take it a little bit slower now because here's where it gets a little bit interesting Ooh. Um, in terms of where we're going to start introducing nephews Ooh. i don't know about you all but i have a lot of nephews <laughs> and nieces i have mostly nieces okay. i have one nephew i have i have technically three nephews but one little one so tres tres niños no well, there are boys right <laughs> but niños right but el sobrino is nephew sobrino 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 correct so if you want to say nephews you just add the S at the end. Sobrinos. Sobrinos. Exactly. Tres sobrinos. Perfect. How do I say I have? Yo tengo. Yo tengo tres sobrinos. Perfect. Yo tengo tres sobrinos. Now, sobrina is la sobrina. La sobrina. La sobrina. La sobrina. Yes. Not sobrina. That's a, well, that's Sabrina a is my friend's name. There you go. <laughs> but that, was, that would be a really good way to remember, right? And, and, and actually, like, this is where, uh, for me particularly, like, the Brie, right, like, mm -hmm. was super hard when I was learning Spanish when I was little. I couldn't even tell, like, the R, because this is where you roll your R's, right? Mm -hmm. like, you maintain a little bit of, like, uh, softness to the R, too, because it's not like, ah. it's like Sobrina. Sobrina, so it's a less... Like a softer R roll exactly. versus the exactly okay. Sobrina. Sobrina, yeah, perfect. <laughs> and now nibblings, mm -hmm. right? I myself so gender neutral exactly is to identify sobrinas and sobrinos, so both of them together. And because we are 
here trying to always be more inclusive, but beyond inclusive, trying to also be respectful, right, to all our folks in the ways that identify, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we're always including them. In our Spanish culture, we're still learning, right, how to move away from masculine and feminine sort of framework of thinking. <laughs> uh, but until we get there, we have sort of now this new word for sobrinas and sobrinos. Ooh, what is it? Which is nibblings. Ooh. Exactly. And nibblings is just a collective word that puts together sobrinos and sobrinas. So instead of saying, yo tengo tres sobrinos or cuatro sobrinos, mm -hmm. and typically folks would think that you have just four, like, total boys and girls, you say I have four nibblings. Four nibblings. Exactly. Cuatro nibblings. Exactly. <laughs> I have six nibblings. Oh! Exactly. <laughs> so, nibblings is? Uh, nieces and nephews. Nieces and nephews. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Now... And so is it the same in English and Spanish? Nibblings? Yes. Okay, great. So, but that's the only word right now that we have. Typically, when we say la and el, right, remember? We have shifted a little bit. Not official, y'all. This you won't find it in dictionaries or books yet, but it's less, less. which is a collective. So less papa, like less papas is typically like your both your mom and your dad. Very cool. Cool. Now, let's look at sort of how we say aunt. Ooh. How you say aunt. Do you know it? It's mm -hmm. crazy aunt Lindsay. Oh, I do! Only because I have a step-sibling okay. whose name is this. Tia? 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 La Tia? La Tia? That's it. Is there more? Wait, you were saying that is her, her name? name is? That's her name. Her, oh. name. her name is Tia. Got it. Her name is Tia. <laughs> I was like, what? You lost me for a second. I was like, I have a step-sibling named Tia. Got it. And I know. <laughs> Got it. And I think that it means ant in a Perfect. <laughs> Not ant, like hormiga. Not a little animal, right? Oh, like a little insect? I used to do that all it's the time. It's called hormiga? Yes. Yeah, so when I was learning English, hormiga. I used to say ant a lot. And people would think that I was saying the little hormiga. Hormiga. Instead mm -hmm. of my aunt. Because it's like, mi tia. Okay. So aunt is la tia. La tia. But that's a really good one. Now I get it what you're saying. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so la tia. Do you know how to say crazy in Spanish? Uh, loco? Loca? Loca. Loca. Exactly. So loca and then tia mm -hmm. and then Lindsay, right? But in this case, it will be shifted. Mm -hmm. It will be la, la tia loca Lindsay. La tia loca Lindsay. Yes. La tia loca Lindsay. I love this. And that will be you. It's more <laughs> fabulous now. La tia loca Lindsay. <laughs> Oh, you, you can shift it around, like Lindsay, la tía loca, mm -hmm. if you want to say your first name, your mm -hmm. first name first. Mm -hmm. Cool. So, what about uncle? I'm going to guess el tío. Perfect. See, it's super easy once you catch sort of the themes in Spanish, mm -hmm. la, el, and then typically when we think about similar words uh, that identify both uh, sort of the masculine and the feminine, you can just shift words around. Great. Right? So it's el tío. El tío. Perfect. And last but not least, in our words of family members, is cousin. Oh, I, I love cousins. I just don't know how to say cousins in Espanol. And cousins in Espanol is actually also gender neutral. Oh. That's the only word right now, too, that is uh, el primo and la prima collective. Yeah. So it's not like you have la cousin or la el cousin. is. El primo en la prima collective. Cool. So my cousin out there is. So la prima. La prima. El primo. El primo. Is cousin. How's that everyone doing so far? Great? Awesome. So let's recap just a little bit. Let's go back to the first one we started. And we'll right? do a call and response. Correct. Uh, that Miss Maria will give you the word and then we will repeat it together. Okay? Perfect. Mom. La mama. Nice. Dad. El papa. Perfect. Daughter. La hermana. Close. La tío. Hija. Hija. La hija. Remember, no H sound. La hija. Hija. Perfect. Son. El hijo. 
Amazing. Brother. El hermano. Exactly. Sister. La hermana. Grandma. La abuela. Perfect. Grandpa. El abuelo. Very well done. Nephew. Nephew is... The number cuatro? You said you have cuatro? Cua tres. tres. You said you have tres. I have tres. Sobrinos. Sobrinos, that's right. So, el... El sobrino. Mis? La sobrina. Perfect. Nibblings. Nibblings? <laughs> Nibblings is el so, sobrinos y sobrinas. Oh, sobrinos y sobrinas. Yes, so it's the plural. Oh, remember? Oh, I didn't realize that we were saying that as one unit. Okay. Yes. El sobrino y el, la sobrina. And typically it's more than, more than just one. Got it. Right? Yeah. Awesome. And la, la tía. Not la hormiga. I said actually hormiga. Oh no! Right? <laughs> Aunt. La tía. Perfect. <laughs> Uncle. El tío. Cousin. Prima y primo. Perfect. That was excellent. That was great. Do you want to okay. do it one more time or I should? Do folks out there are feeling good so far? Let's do it one more time. One more time? Yeah. Perfect. All right. I'm going to shift it up, uh, shift it a little bit. Oh, I'm going to mix it up? Oh, yeah. goodness. Okay. okay. This is going to be an awesome challenge. So make sure ready? you're shouting out with me, guys. You Perfect. ready? All right. Nephew. El Got hijo. It. Son and nephew are a little <laughs> different. But let's try it one more time. Nephew is... El sobrino. Oh, el sobrino. Yes. El sobrino. <laughs> Son. Hija. Hijo. Hijo. El hijo. Perfect. Remember <laughs> the O and the A at the end of each word. That could also be helpful for folks out there. El okay. hijo. Aunt. La tía. Perfect. Nibblings. Nibblings. <laughs> no. Sobrino <laughs> y sobrinas. Perfect. <laughs> Cousin. Prima y primo. Perfect. Daughter. Is that hija? Yes. La nice. hija. <laughs> Mom. La mama. Uh, let's repeat this time. Uh, daughter. Gosh. You just said it. This is la hija. Perfect. La hija. Perfect. Grandpa. <laughs> Uh, el abuelo. Oh my goodness. Woohoo! Grandma. La abuela. 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 Perfect. <laughs> Uncle. Ooh, el tío. Mm -hmm. Dad. El papá. And last but not least, I think we already said it, but just to remind ourselves, nibblings. <laughs> Sobrina y servidos? Perfect. <laughs> I'm actually going to start introducing nibblings also as a word in Spanish to yeah. my little nibblings. Cool, cool. Because when they say sobrinos and sobrinas, they still associate. Because once you learn Spanish as a native language speaker, it's hard to sort of also maintain that masculinity and femininity. Oh, really? So I'm really learning, having them learn like more gender neutral words as they grow up. Awesome. Right? So you can also say nibblings in Spanish, although it would be Spanglish. <laughs> right? But that's it for in terms of like family members in our family. Remember, you say yo tengo. Yo tengo. It's actually really important. So when you want to say yo tengo, mi papá, mm -hmm. my dad, mm -hmm. and if you want to introduce them, you can also introduce them by saying their name. Yo tengo mi papá, Javier. What's your dad's name? Uh, yo tengo mi papá, Charles. Charles. Yeah. What about your mom? Yo tengo, mom wait, yo tengo mi mamá? Yo tengo mi mamá. Yo tengo mi mamá es Kimberly. <laughs> mi mamá es Kimberly. Perfect. <laughs> So shout out to Kimberly and Charles for an amazing Tia Loca Lindsay. Uh, thank you all so much for joining us today. Hopefully you'll remember everything. If not, 
follow Crazy on Lindsay. Shout out to all everyone out there and keep up Yay. con Espanol. Oh, thank you. Let's clap it up for Miss Maria. Thank you. And I'm so excited because Miss Maria is going to stick around for our coloring and fun session. Yeah. Oh, last week we did a puzzle, but I think this week we're going to do a little bit of coloring. Perfect. A little coloring? Okay. Yeah. So we're going to quickly wash our hands mm -hmm. and we'll see you in just a couple seconds for our awesome coloring and puzzle play section. Bye. Wash your hands. So what I would love for you to do, if you have not already, is go and get your favorite puzzle, your favorite coloring book, a journal, some loose leaf paper, whatever you got handy. Grab your pencil, uh, your pencil holder or your uh, marker case, whatever you have, grab them, come and join us. And I'm going to give Miss yeah. Maria a choice while we maintain distancia social. Uh, we also washed our hands so we can share, uh, we can share our book and we can share our pen and pencil so long as we don't cough or sneeze into our hands. If we do that, then we'll just quickly wash our hands so we can go back to sharing. So last week we did a beautiful mm -hmm. puzzle of a future, I think doctor, I can't remember, or future astronaut. It was. It was great, whatever it was. Uh, and so <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give Miss Maria a choice if she wants to do Mad Libs and do a fun story, if we wanna do our Super Women in STEM coloring book, which we introduced yesterday, or if we wanna color some more gift boxes since we've been making so many awesome things that we love to share with our neighbors and with our friends that we're not able to see as much as we like, or we're gonna to go to the Fab Lab Black drawing book uh, and do some, some just fun doodles and drawing. Which one would you like to do today? You know, I am in to do some doodling. Let's do so some doodling. Let's do that one. Great. So I'll just grab these. Also, I think it's like probably the first time in like two weeks that I've drawn in black paper. Do you draw in black paper normally? Not necessarily, but like this is pretty cool. Oh, this is from so, yesterday. No. <laughs> it's all from yesterday. So I'm going to get us some pages that we can share. So that'll be uh, Miss Maria's side. This will be Crazy Aunt Lindsay's side. And we'll just move a little bit closer. And of course, we have these great. Which ones are the ones for this one? So for these, we've got two white gel pens. Perfect. And we've got three chalk pen colors. So we can all, we can just play with these. Uh, and I'll, I should probably get more because this is a lot of fun. I usually use this to take notes. Shout out to my friend, Jordan Hales, oh, who okay. introduced me to uh, black paper and white ink. It's, it has changed my life, actually. Yeah. 
All right, so we're just gonna doodle. And of course, if you have your journal with you or if you just want to think along with us, we've got our Fab Lab chat out loud questions. And the first one I'm going to ask all of you and Miss Maria is gonna come up right now. The first one is, what's something new that you learned this week? What's something new that you learned this week? Hmm. Should we draw? Actually? I don't know. I think I'm just gonna do. You know, I've been doing things. a lot of doodling. I was actually. Can we just talk about how beautiful Miss Maria's nails are right now? Oh, thank you. Uh, do them right here so they can see it in the overhead. Beautiful. I did them. I did them earlier with this whole skin at home. You did them yourself. I did. How come that's not the Fab Lab art class? Uh, nail, <laughs> nail yes, doing. Nail doing. Oh, well, look at my poor nail. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, but yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty awesome to spend some time and just like relax and do everything here, uh, do your nails. Mm -hmm. But let's see what I learned this week. And your questions always make me think. Um, <laughs> the see. Fab Lab loves to make people think. Yeah, I mean, there's there's something I always learn every day, but I would say that something I definitely learned uh, this week uh, that I really enjoy primarily is I learned um, how to draw a couple of things using words Ooh, so what? hence i wanted to try this out uh what so did you come up with for example you learned? i learned how to draw boy, like a boy using the words boy you learned how to draw a boy using the word boy yeah so that's boy right there right okay i love your handwriting yes and then you close it i've been just improvising a lot being at home with like nibblings and like mm -hmm. chatting with them during the work day mm -hmm. and like taking breaks and connecting with them and trying to like keep or social distancing while still chatting and connecting with each other do you live with your nibblings do they live very nearby i don't they live in uh woodburn okay which is 45 minutes south of portland between like salem oregon which is our capital got it um and they but they're amazing sophia one of them's Shout out to Sophia. Hey, Sophia. I was going to say something, but then everyone else is going to not like me afterwards. <laughs> okay. But hi, Sophia. <laughs> uh, she right now is learning a lot and asking so many questions. And so I'm constantly also trying to learn new ways to engage with them. Awesome. Right? Um, so I've been learning how to draw this. So here's a boy. Not the best yet. I bet it's beautiful. But yeah, I've been I've been oh, learning how to, I've been learning how to draw a little bit more. Um, I also been learning how to cook better. Oh, you mentioned um, that last week. So yeah. what 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 has been your recipe this week? Uh, I've been sticking with uh, chicken curry. <laughs> uh, I love Thai food, <laughs> just generally. And ever since I learned how to make uh, chicken curry, that's all I've been cooking, y'all. Chicken curry. Chicken curry. I love it. You have uh, to come in next week and do a chicken curry for the Fab Lab lunchbox. We'll have to see about that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, cooking has also been pretty out there, and uh, also I've been learning how to uh, navigate a little bit of our. So as you all probably know, digital learning has been moving because of our schools uh, being closed. So I've been learning and keeping up with our classrooms online and how to navigate sort of our internet and things like that. So we've been learning how to play music um, as like as a teacher with like certain students. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is incredible app that folks are coming up with. What's the app? Just, so, uh, well now I can actually say this, but like I work for Portland Public Schools and we now have a PPS HD, which is our online ver version of awesome. learning. Um, and so for anyone watching, like there's also like the PPS HD, uh, learning classroom and that's sort of like the app where you can learn how to uh, well pretty much all of your classes are there now okay and what's the app called it, it's that it's well is the PP, PPS HD and then that, PPS HD yeah, for sure okay. got uh, it and so that typically is just like the online version uh, and there's multiple apps in there Oh, um, okay. So they, if kids and families belong to Portland Public Schools, mm -hmm. they would, how would they find the app? So they can go on the website of PP, uh, PPS and then just click on the PP, PPS HD link. And then that takes you to all the information that you need to sort of find all of like your classrooms. Of course, if you have Wi-Fi access and a computer. And if you don't, right, you can 
definitely get folks uh, signed up to grab those as well online. Okay. Well, yeah. shout out to Portland Public Schools. Thanks for being with us. Yeah. Woo. Awesome. There's that boy. That looks adorable. The little, the mouth is a little weird. <laughs> the mouth is fine. super cute. I love it. <laughs> I was like, that's a little weird, but yeah. Awesome. And then I just did a little hand. I just did a little hand drawing that I did out my nails and then I painted my nails pink. Very nice. <laughs> oh, okay, I see. Yeah. Now I'm just gonna make some doodles. What did you guys learn this week? What's something that I learned how to do this week? Hmm. I have no idea. It's hard, right? Yeah, to like really go into your mind and recap all that has happened. Mm-hmm. Let's see. What did I learn this week? I think I learned, hmm, I learned, dang, I don't know. I'm trying to think what I could have learned this week. I feel like I've just been learning a lot about live television. Live television? <laughs> like everything that I can think of right now just comes in terms of like, Putting a show, to, like putting a show together, doing a live thing, getting mm -hmm. people here, like just all the craziness yeah. that comes along with that. Um, yeah. So anyway, I just feel like I feel like a big thing that I've learned this week is how to just just go with the flow, um, how to how to make decisions really fast, uh, which is definitely something that I think I think I've always been good at making decisions really fast, but like really mm -hmm. trusting things will come together. Um, I think I've, I'm just learning, I'm learning how to trust that things will come together and still be great on their own without a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of planning. So going with the flow a little bit. Going with the flow. And I'm already pretty spontaneous. Yes. <laughs> this takes it to a whole nother level for sure. It's hard. I mean, that question I feel, uh, I oftentimes feel is like, it's hard because folks are going with sort of the flow, but it's sometimes hard to like just stay still and process mm -hmm. what you're learning mm -hmm. at least that's happening for me a lot during this time uh, with like covid and everything i'm home and i'm doing so much mm -hmm. but when i think about what i'm doing yeah, mm -hmm. um it's just hard it's yeah. just like oh man i've been doing so many things mm -hmm. i'm gonna actually stop myself saying man because i keep <laughs> saying oh man all the time you know what i i recognize this is something that maybe i'm learning um behind the scenes with our, with our team, uh -huh. <laughs> according to uh, Portland Business Journal, we live together, which uh -huh. is not, not untrue. <laughs> um, but we've been having a lot of talks behind the scenes as uh -huh. we like switch and like plan for the next day show or during lunch breaks. Uh, and one of the things that we've been talking about mm -hmm. is recognizing um, just sort of things like implicit bias. Have you ever heard the mm -hmm. word implicit bias? So implicit bias is um, sort of, uh, a way of thinking that has been taught to you maybe indirectly, but just by the circumstances of the world. So it's not even something that you're fully in control of, right. uh, but it is something that you can decide to unravel if you choose to. So implicit mm -hmm. bias, what you think about people based on how they look mm -hmm. um, from other things in your brain that are, you're not even fully aware of or conscious of. So right. we're talking about implicit bias. Uh, and I was just sort of sharing about how um, I came to understand uh, the ways in which I harbor implicit bias and how it's caught, you know, sort of caused me mm -hmm. to relate to the world. And one of the things that I have learned and have been sort of working on, and I'm not perfect at it just yet, but it's okay, um, is even on the show, I'll say, guys, hey guys. Mm -hmm. It's sort of like defaulting to masculine right. language to include a more gender gender neutral assumption, but it's still a masculine word. Exactly. Uh, so I've been trying to be more careful about that, but it just slips out so easy because mm -hmm. for so many years I've been saying, hey guys, hey guys. Uh, mm -hmm. And so anyway, that's something that I'm becoming aware of and becoming intentional about learning how to be more inclusive in my language. Absolutely. And I think, and similarly, I just realized that I was saying, oh man, I sort of like indicate, right? Like, oops. <laughs> and I could easily just say oops, yeah. right? Like, mm -hmm. I don't have to say man or wow or something to that extent. And so I think that's, that's super important as, yeah. we, as we grow with the kids. Ooh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. All right. So our next shout out loud question Woo! is what's your favorite What is your favorite place Ooh. on 
Earth, which maybe we can't get to right now because of our distancia yeah. social distancia effort, social. efforts as a community, as I like to call it, our global health efforts, staying home, staying mm -hmm. isolated, not going out to restaurants right. and, you know, stores and hanging out with our friends in the street as much as we normally mm -hmm. do. Uh, so Distancia Social has me really, really thinking about my favorite places. And I would What's love... your favorite place? My favorite What's place favorite? is, believe it or not, being on an airplane. Tell me more. Being on an airplane. One of my favorite things to do is work my way through the, air through the airport and then board the plane. And then when we take off, I love taking off. And when we uh -huh. land, I love landing. But it's the, you know, anywhere from, sometimes I take a lot of trips to Los Angeles. Uh -huh. uh, you know, a, like sometimes once a month I'm in, I'm in LA. Uh, so it's just a really short flight. I, th I don't even think it's a full two hours. Sometimes if I'm uh -huh. in a rush and need to get up to Seattle, I'll take a quick 30, 40 minute flight up mm -hmm. to Seattle. Uh, but my family lives on the East Coast. So that's a six to eight hour journey sometimes. Okay. And once you get past all the, you know, dry nasal passages, uh -huh. <laughs> uh, to me, it's just, in some cases, you don't have any internet, um, you know, in mm -hmm. some cases, you know, like at, if you're, depending upon the airline that you're on, there isn't even um, a television yeah. or, you know, different technology that works properly in the air. So mm -hmm. you don't have any social media, you don't have any TV or movies that you're watching right. and you're just kind of sitting there. And it's the closest thing that I'm able to get to in terms of meditation. <laughs> My mind is so uh, active and I, I feel like there's always so much to do. Uh -huh. uh, and it's also, I mean, for me, before Distancia Social, before our global health effort, I always really enjoyed getting on the airplane and finding out who I'm going to meet. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, sometimes you've got people who put their headphones directly on and yeah. don't want to talk to anybody. But then you have, you know, the people that you sit next to who sort of secretly really want to have a chit chat with somebody new, who sort of secretly want to be distracted or occupied. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you can end up in a really fun conversation getting to know somebody new. I'm an extreme extrovert <laughs> so are you the one that doesn't put your head oh i'm the deal? one that i'm the one that's, i've had to learn how to take cues from people <laughs> so i won't bust my headphones out until i can get a read of who i okay. left on my right like is this person chatting does this person want to secretly chit chat <laughs> no they don't okay so i'll put my headphones in to indicate them it. that it's okay uh -huh. but i love getting to know new people mm -hmm. when it is quiet when my social media is off when my computer internet isn't working uh -huh. Um, it's really great to just sort of clear my mind, let my imagination wander. I'll bring a notepad, a notebook or a notepad like uh -huh. this, and I'll, I'll doodle, I'll draw, I'll write words, I'll write stories by hand. Mm -hmm. I won't judge myself. Uh, awesome. So I just, yeah, being in an airplane. Being That's in an airplane cool. is one of my favorite things. Yeah. yeah, for a couple of different reasons. but Yeah, I mean, it seems like you have like that mix of everything at the same time, depending on what you want yeah. and feeling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, you know, I have a lot of favorite places uh, on earth right now. I like <laughs> even because I've been thinking about them mm -hmm. all the time because I can't wait until we are able to sort of get out. Uh, and also, I, I guess I would say I'm also an extrovert, but I love also just being still sometimes and just watching or like, like earth in general, right? But like just watching water. Ooh. One of the things I enjoy a lot is, um, so in Woodburn, there's this pond, fishery pond, like um, like in Jervis, which is another like city outside of Woodburn. Mm -hmm. And there's this fishery pond by the county that has tons and tons of trees. But as you are walking, there's this huge pond where people use to like fish, sit by the side and do like picnics. And I discovered this area where it has like one of the benches where you can sit down close to like the river, like the pond mm -hmm. and just watch water like move through rocks, like fish. And they're like a bunch of animals. What do you call those little animals that are like tiny? Snails? No, they're like, t uh, not tods. Toads? Toads? Frogs? No. In Spanish, we call them um, topos. Tadpoles? Say that again. A tadpole? Tadpole. Like a, a, a baby, a baby frog? Yes. A tadpole. <laughs> what did you call it? Topos. Topos. <laughs> Topos equals tadpole. The so Spanish that is not. Those are like the tadpoles. Those are like the type of words that like I grew up with, right? Yeah. Like with those little animals. Topos. So it just reminds me 
back home in Mexico mm. where I would just get out in the rain and swim uh, like my feet with the little tadpoles mm -hmm. and that's just like my happy place uh, also because of the air and sort of like the flowers and there's just so much life there mm -hmm. and during spring mm -hmm. which we are right now it gets even more beautiful yeah. so I haven't had the chance to go but that's definitely my happy place mm -hmm. or like my favorite place to be on earth for okay. sure yeah i would love for you to think about what your favorite place on earth is write it in your journal you can even have your parents share it with us on instagram tagging me at the fab lab hq mm -hmm. or you can just think it in your mind if this is your quiet time and share it with your family at dinner all right so our last question of the day is what made you smile today Miss Maria, what made you smile today? Um, let's see. I think, generally speaking, you all are making me smile. And I just like, I'm like, I'm over here like smiling. I can't stop smiling. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I can tell her to smile. Exactly. So uh, you all are making me smile for sure. I would say though, this morning, uh, Yareli, one of my little nieces, uh, she's learning how to use FaceTime. Although kids these days are, amazingly smart mm -hmm. she's teaching me how to use technology sometimes uh, but she called me and she uh, had an outfit this morning of wonder woman ah. uh, because they're doing like a dress up uh, of like different superheroes and kids are superhero right Ooh, now we should do that in the fab lab right? uh -huh. and uh -huh. so yeah she was just calling me as like a good morning sort of thing when i got home and before getting ready and before going to like work mode right and that was just the most beautiful sort of thing that i was not i wasn't even expecting her call right like and so that like really just lined me up a lot it made me smile so much and made me also just miss her a little bit you know and giving her a hug obviously with her consent because i'm also teaching her how to not expect people to just expect their hugs mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that was nice that's a good lesson to learn yeah so that was what made me smile. How about you? What made me smile? Um, you know, what made me smile is just how much fun today has been. Mm -hmm. uh, so many things changed this morning. Uh -huh. We were supposed to have a, another guest on for the morning show. Uh, and last minute for things for things that are just fully outside of their control, they weren't able to make it. So we had uh -huh. to rush and like make today's show. We had to like come up with a project and get all the stuff together. We just had to like make it as great as it was. And in between, uh -huh. as we were just sort of like, the whole thing was coming together. The team was like playing music and we were just sort of dancing and having fun. Uh, so just, yeah, that's what makes me smile. I have such a fun team here. that are just like super committed to this project and committed to each other. Mm -hmm. And just in the moments that could be stressful, it's like, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna play some Beyonce. We're gonna play some Rihanna. We're gonna rock it out. We're gonna have a good time as we solve this problem together. <laughs> uh, and it's gonna be great. So that makes me smile. This awesome. this this whole show, this whole experience has been just a lot of a lot of fun. Our sponsors have been super awesome. I get messages from from all of our sponsors mm -hmm. every day with how much fun that they're having watching this show and awesome. how much support we're getting. So just this whole this whole ad hoc experience has been really great for the last few weeks, but that made me smile today. That's just how the team came together, just to have a lot of fun and figure out how to make magic happen with, with like literally 10 minutes on the clock. Uh -huh. That's really cool. I mean, yeah. you are even smiling as you say this. So that, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. And then of course, having you here, Lindsay loved Le Espanol. Me Espanol. encanta Espanol. Me encanta Am I using Espanol. it right? Yes. Me encanta because love is encanta and amor. Me encanta is a little bit more to the point of adore. Adore. Encanta yeah. is adore. Ad okay. Well, encanta is ad uh, adore is adoro. Adoro. Yeah. Yo adoro español. Mm -hmm. yeah, I adore Spanish. But it's also a similar uh, synonym for uh, me encanta. Is that how you spell E N C A N T A? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Very good. Thanks. Nice. Sometimes it's so easy, like when you name the word and it's just like write it, mm -hmm. um, it just comes up. But that's awesome. <laughs> so I think that's going to be about it for our coloring and fun time. Again, if you are just joining us, we had three chat out loud questions for our coloring and fun time with Miss Maria from today's community class. The first one was, what did you learn this week? 
The second one is, what is your favorite place on earth? And the third is, what made you smile today? If you are just joining us, I want you to think the answer's in your mind and either have your family share it with us in the comment section on Facebook, or if you're catching this replay on YouTube slash the Fab Lab HQ, then you can hop over to my Instagram or Twitter and have your parents share with us any of those answers. I would love to know and share them with Miss Maria later. Yeah. We're gonna wrap this up really fast. I'm gonna wash my hands and I'm gonna meet you in the Fab Lab li Library for story time. See you in a sec. Thank you. Wash your hands, everybody. Wash your hands to the beat. Wash your hands, everybody. Wash your hands with me. First, put the water on hot. Hot. Put some soap on your hands. On your hands. You gotta wash your hands a whole lot. Whole lot. Keep a clean hands is the plan. That's plan. Now rinse them. Give them a shake. Dry your hands, I said dry your hands, wash your hands and don't touch your face. Si me voy a lavar, si me voy a lavar, las manos limpias me voy a dejar. <laughs> read stories to tie up our day. I'm super excited about today's book. Uh, this is Hey Grand Dude by Sir Paul McCartney. Sir Paul McCartney is a prolific, prolific musician who I guess has become a granddad and he's written this awesome book illustrated by Catherine Durst. I can't wait to dive in to the adventures with Grand Dude. Are you ready? Let's see here. Hey, Grand Dude. I'm gonna read the postcard. Dear reader, my name is Edward Marshall Sr. I have four grandchildren. I call them chillers and they call me Grand Dude. I live in a very normal house on a very normal street. But when my chillers come to stay, we go on adventures that are far from normal. Sometimes things get a little bit out of hand, but everything always works out just fine in the end. Come and join us on our adventures. Yours sincerely, Grand Dude. Let's dive in to Hey Grand Dude, written by Sir Paul McCartney and illustrated by Catherine Durst. Lucy and Tom and Bob were spending a weekend with their granddad. Today was one of those days when nothing felt quite right. It was gray and drizzly and everybody was grumpy and too bored to be bothered. Cheer up, chillers, said Grand Dude, pulling out a pile of postcards from the back of his, pocket, his trouser pockets. Look at these. Here's awesome grand dude with a super cool bow tie <laughs> and a handful of awesome postcards. M picked out a postcard of a sandy beach, which Miss Maria loves, and sparkling blue waters. I wish we could go there, grand dude, she said. Well, let's see what we can do. Grand dude reached into his coat pocket and took out a shiny compass. He gave the compass a rub and a wave over the postcard. The needle started to spin round and round. See the compass needle spin? Let the magic fun begin. And then in a flash of magic, zing, bang, sizzle, everything changed. The children were standing on a golden beach with little waves tickling their toes. The water felt beautifully cool. We're on the beach from the postcard, Bob laughed as he splashed in the sea. But the magic compass hadn't finished yet. Huge flying fish leapt from the sea. Hey, Grand Dude, they called. It's a school of flying fish, said Grand Dude. Come on, chillers, let's go for a ride. A school, whispered Lucy. I hope we don't have to do any homework. 
Look at these huge, giant, flying fish. <laughs> fish with wings, have you ever? <laughs> they skimmed around shimmering blue waves on the backs of flying fish before coming to rest on the hot sand. They built sandcastles and then lay beneath a coconut tree eating ice cream. The memory of their gray, grumpy day was completely washed away and they were perfectly happy until... Ouch! cried Bob. A little crab scuttled across the beach. That crab just pinched my toe! Oh no! Suddenly lots of little crabs were scurrying out of the sea, heading straight toward Grand Dude and the children. Hey Grand Dude, said Em, can we go somewhere a little less pinchy? Yes, we'd better hop to it, said Grand Dude. He quickly waved the magic compass over a postcard and one and this one had a picture of a cowboy. The needle compass began to spin. Let the magic fun begin. The magic flashed and sparkled and once again, zing, bang, sizzle, everything changed. Grand Dude and the children found themselves in a desert valley with spiky green cactuses. A cowboy gall galloped toward them on a beautiful spotted horse. Hey, Grand Dude, called out the cowboy waving his hat in the air. Wow, what a handsome Appaloosa said Grand Dude, admiring the horse. Appaloosey? asked Em. No, that's the kind of horse it is. It has nothing to do with me, said Lucy. Grand Dude gave a whistle and five more horses came galloping up. He helped each of the children onto a horse and they raced together through the valley. He cried Bob. Faster, yelled Lucy. What was that cloud of dust on the horizon? Oh no, a herd of buffalo was rushing straight toward them. The canyon echoed with the sound of a hundred hooves. Before they could ride to safety, Tom's horse reeled and reared and he tumbled to the ground. Hold on, Tom, shouted Grand Dude, snapping a rope from the cowboy's saddle. With a twirl, he lassoed Tom and hauled him onto his horse. Ride, chillers, cried Grand Dude, as fast as you can. Here's them getting out of there. <laughs> they cleared the, st the stampede just in time. Hey, Grand Dude, panted Tom. Perhaps we could go somewhere a little less... Stampy, said Grand Dude. Yes, good idea. And I think we need to uh, cool down. Once again, Grand Dude whipped out his magic compass and waved it over a postcard. See the compass needle spin? Let the magic fun begin. Before the children could see the picture, magic sparkled and flashed. And in the blink of an eye, zing, bang, sizzle, everything changed. They found themselves high on a hill in the afternoon sun. The children laughed as they rolled in sweet smelling wildflowers that seemed to stretch forever. Grand Dude pulled out his trusty guitar and began strumming a song. Grand Dude drew a small telescope from his pocket and they looked and they took a look at the snow capped peaks. But soon they heard a rumbling sound. Oh no! Hey, Grand Dude, look! yelled Lucy as she peered through the telescope. Telescope, A huge wall of snow was tumbling down the mountains above. Avalanche! Quick, chillers, cried Grandpa. Jump! Just before the wave of snow reached them, Grand Dude and the children leapt onto one of the cows. Up, cow, up, Grand Dude cried. Magic swirled from the compass, lifting them higher and higher off the ground, sailing them safety, safely through the sky with a sea of snow rushing beneath them. Swiss cows are exceptionally good flyers, said Grand Dude. 
Now, riding high, riding a flying cow was a lot of fun, but it had been a very long day. Hey, grand dude, <sighs> Lucy said with a yawn. Maybe we could go somewhere a little more. Sleepy, said grand dude with a chuckle. That sounds like a very good idea. This time, instead of a postcard, grand dude pulled a photograph of his own house from his pocket. Magic compass, one more spin. It's time for bedtime to begin. He waved his compass over it, making the magic sparkle and spin. And just like that, zing, bang, sizzle. They were back in Grand Dude's living room. And the compass had not finished yet. With a final flash of magic, the children were changed and ready for bed. Their teeth were brushed, their faces were washed, and they were all tucked up tight. And in five minutes flat, Tom and Bob and Lucy and Em were fast asleep, dreaming of their next adventures. Good night, Grand Dude. And good night to all my Fab Labbers. Thanks for joining me of week two of Digital Daycare. I can't wait to see you next week.